Kyle here from allmediareviews.blogspot.com. I'm um, going to try to squeeze in a little bit more to the list so I can hopefully wrap it up. Uh, please subscribe if you haven't subscribed. I really appreciate that. This list is a, a big deal. And like I said, this is sort of a template to more. I'm going to be talking about these. I'm going to do an artist list, as I mentioned. I did the EPs list. So um, this is sort of the start of a series of this kind of stuff. But I mean, there's more other plans. But this this specific list is always a, a really big deal to me. So um, if you found this channel and, and like a lot of these bands, a lot of these albums, I'd love for you to subscribe anyway. I, well, I left off at 68 earlier today. We're at 67 now. The Deer Hunter, Act 5, Hymns with the Devil and Confessional, uh, released on September 9th, 2016. The last, at this point, the final, potentially, uh, of the, the Axe album. There might be an Act 6. But um, I, I enjoy this album a lot. When I first, when I came out, I remember thinking this is like their best record beginning to end, or... I kind of felt like, because this was written and recorded, I guess, at the same time <coughs> as Act 4, which came out the year, almost to the day of the year before. I talked about this in the, the Deer Hunter albums video series. Um, I felt like this was a better record beginning to end. Now, revisiting the two records kind of flip-flop a little bit in the sense that um, I kind of would go back to Act 4 a little more now. But Act it's so close. Um I find that some of it is pretty extensive in terms of the, the, the heaviness, the darkness, and the, the layering on some of these tracks. The Flame is Gone, The Fire Remains, that those kind of tracks. But um, my favorite, just to talk about highlights, I would still always go to Light. Light is definitely the the biggest highlight on this album. But, you know, you have the, the Sweet, the, the Moon Slash Awake, uh, the Revival, the singles, the Revival, and Mr. Usher. I don't know if that was a single extra video, single slash video. Uh, the most cursed of hands slash who am I? Um, I think it's um, Glory is another one of the singles, but um, I can't remember. What, you know, the Dear Apparition is mentioned in the lyrics on one of the th tracks. I think it might be a beginning. Anyway, th this is an epic record, um, and I think it sort of was the culmination of all the other acts coming into one. They do have some references. Um, but I guess that's why it's not as high as a few of the other Deer Hunter records that I'm going to talk about down the road here. Um, because, I don't know, I guess it, 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 it you know, it's, it doesn't have quite as much depth and it's a little excessive in terms of, you know, it gets kind of dark at times. But, you know, you're talking about still an, a band and an album that I love. So, you know, it's just splitting hairs, of course. Um, but yeah, Act Four, Act Five, rather, Hymns with the Devil and Confessional. I mean, that my opinion may change on this. It's kind of gone back and forth. You know, listening to it or, earlier this year it was the first time in a few years. So, anyway, number sixty-seven, number sixty-six, the Family Crest, uh, Beneath the Brine. I believe this is my top. This is the highest one I have ranked. Uh, Beneath the Brine, the, tw the album that introduced me and many other people to the Family Crest. Um, it's got the title track beneath the brine, which is still probably their best song to me and many others. It's so good. It's like eight minutes. I don't have the times on here, but um, I the biggest story with Family Crest was I was going to go see Mother Falcon, a chamber rock band that I like, um, at the entry at, at, in in downtown Minneapolis, and this was the opening band. I'm like, who who is this band, Family Crest? And I was like blown away by them, and I just went just went ape shit over them at that point. And this was the album I bought it on vinyl, you know. I would say, you know, this album is sort of, the first half is really consistent, and then it's sort of hit and miss after that. Um, the World is great. It's very memorable. Love Don't Go, they did a single for that. Um, Howl, that's kind of, uh, that reminds me of like a sort of like a pub theme or, um, what's the word, uh, anthem, you know. <laughs> it, it's very kind of sing-along-y and very uh, blue-collar, almost bluesy at points. Um um or cabaret it's kind of it sounded retro sounding at points um let's see here what am i the other ones the other when the lights go out was a song they've done live um as we move forward you know so i mean this is this is an album that while maybe i would say if i rank songs there's other albums that might have more songs at the top i guess i don't know i, I just find that i guess overall it's sort of this is this is nostalgia for nostalgia purposes and um, maybe ha just at least having their best song that helps you know I kind of I've listened to this probably the most among all the records and so it's still my my number one record and finishes at number sixty six um, on the list of progressive art rock albums 
Um, anyway, number 65, uh, The Meek Shell Inherits was left, the second and most likely final album from the band Kiss Kiss. Uh, the band that it came out in 2009, this album. The band that, um, you know, that they used violin and, you know, a lot of weird, quirky elements. Uh, they kind of cram so, real, so many ideas into one, and they just they do it so well. Um, the only thing I'll say is initially when this album came out, the song Virus, the last track, is just kind of a lot of static. It has like maybe 10 minutes or more where it doesn't really – it was just kind of filler-ish. Um, and I, it kind of stuck out a little bit like a sore thumb at the end. I think my, my album's from 2009. This would have ended up a little bit higher if I if you would have taken that part out. And I, it kind of has grown on me. Virus is no acceptable. See – but my favorites on this are Through the Day. It's classic Kiss Kiss. Um, if you like, I mean, they're compared to bands like The Paper Chase and Cursive or System of a Down. I, the System of a Down thing makes some sense. It's it's very kind of, there's, there's dark tongue-in-cheek humor, um, very excellent musicianship. The, the violin work is just stands out. And Josh Benash's vocals and, you know, his, his writing Kind of the orchestral elements. I mean, they did some different things, like with electronic and synthesizers on this album compared to their the previous record, which will be showing up pretty soon. But um, through the day, all they draw, um, the best mistake. Uh, this, of course, the absurd track titles: "Innocent One," "Innocent Two." You know, but um, I haven't listened to this thing in, in quite a while. Though I did a video on them in two thousand, like last year, but I don't even know if I got around to revisiting the whole record that 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 day that I did that video. But um. I love Kiss Kiss. I love Josh Benash, especially this band and the band that he did after Kiss Kiss. Um, and this, this is still, you know, this is the production was a step up on the previous record, which I didn't think the production was bad, but this, this, um, this album still had that was an improvement among other things that that I, or at least a difference, if not an improvement. So anyway, Kiss Kiss, the Meek Shell inherits what's left with even like a you know a tongue in cheek title um, from two thousand nine at number sixty five. Number 64, Japanese, another Japanese band like Kasika or Tokyo Jihan, a band called Mutyumu, who, like Kasika, they only had two albums, uh, and they pretty much have been on hiatus or done since then. This is their final one that came out in 2008, the same year that Kasika's um, Mosaic came out. And, I mean, it's not they're not identical bands, Kasika and Mutyumu, but these are the two for a while there that I was just sort of like my go-to. There's a ton of Japanese rock, J-rock, J-pop, J-metal bands, and I've gotten into some others here and there, but these are the, Kasika and them, and I guess you'd put Tokyo Jihan, are kind of the two or three that sort of have broken through and been sort of of my go-tos for this style. And this album... Like, the previous record is good. I haven't listened to that one nearly as much, but this album I listened to a ton back toward the end of 2008. Um, the best description is it's, like, listening to classical music and, like, post-rock and prog and some punk, all, you know, with a female singer, like a sort of opera-type vocalist, but it doesn't get too cheesy. Um, the rhythms and the energy is off the charts on this album. I... I've never really heard anything quite like it, actually. I wish I could hear more, because they haven't been a band, they haven't done anything in 14 years or whatever. Um, I Maybe there's some other J-Rock that's like this that I have never heard. I'd love to discover that. Uh, Tokyo g ends great, but they're not exactly like this. Um, the dynamics and just sort of the epicness of this record is just so good. I want to buy a copy. Unfortunately, it would be nar darn near a hundred dollars or more to try to import it from Japan. It's the only place they have it. Unlike Kasika, which their their CDs actually did get some distribution in the U.S. So um, I bought it. I think the Kasika CDs on CD Baby, but CD Baby is no more. Um, I don't know if they're on Spotify though, which I haven't. I haven't listened to them extensively, but this is this is just unbelievably good in fact i would say that it's probably a little bit low <laughs> but um mut yumu's Ilya, you know and the song titles of course i cannot really go into depth about what you know there's a it just flows the, the whole album flows really well um but yeah they use classical instrumentation and piano and really fast piano so well and it's just the there's melodies that stick in your head afterwards anyway um so it's Kasi, uh, Mutt Yumu, rather, for Ilya from 2008, uh, number 64. So the first Fair to Midland album, I believe, on this list. Uh, Inter Funda Stifle. Um, their second sort of proper album, but it was independent released. And I'm going to get into the record that came after that pretty soon. But um, 
this album has a I have a soft spot for. This was their only full length, or the only full length I heard initially when I got into them. It's got a lot of songs that end up on the next record that were re-recorded. However, the arrangements are a little different. Then it's got a lot of songs that were not on the, the next record that are still really good that have grown on me. Songs like Granny Niblo, um, uh, do, 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 uh, Abigail, Timbuktu, uh, Kyla Cries Cologne, which was on the, the Drawn and Quarter EP, which I talked about in the EP list, um, and uh, Keen's and when the bow breaks um but then you have early versions of dance of the manatee vice versa sea far is not um uh my my, my missing here walls of jericho of course uh, yeah this is i mean darrow's great he his, his vocals changed a lot compared to the debut album carbon copy silver lining and just everything they added matt langley as a keyboard player so they you know they had a little more of a dream theory element or a rush element i guess on this this album but you know i'll say this it still has these sort of independent production values so you know it has its charm i think the production has a charm the fair to midland fans are rabid that i know and a lot of them swear by this record they prefer it actually over the record that came out the two records that came after it some of them do and they they cuz they like the kind of production values cuz it's more DIY um but yeah this is a terrific album I, I i wore it out actually for a while but i would ugh, i never get i you know i you know it's weird how the the record that followed it you know they they stepped up in a lot of ways and i got addicted to it as well but i would still go back to this it's a weird case of an album Two albums that have some same songs that you listen to both versions and appreciate. A little bit like Kevin Gilbert, actually. Anyway, number 63, Interfunder Stifle from Fair to Midland from 2004. So now going to 160, or 160, going to number 62, we have Dirt Poor Robin's Dead Horse, which, you know, technically, yeah, it's considered a compilation on here, but it was released as a full album. Bunch of EPs plus some extra songs. Came out in the year 2020 after the EPs came out in 2019 and 2020. Um, you know, and I'm putting this relatively high considering how new it is. And I, I could definitely say, while well, this, I, I love this album. Um, Sky Rider might be my, that or I go back and forth between that and Solemn Dream, my favorite Dirt Poor Robin song. Uh, or Menchante, I don't know. Um, that that is my number one go to on this album. But this album is pretty long. If you 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 lump all the three EPs together plus the extra tracks, what does it end up being? Eighty one minutes. This is like the River Empires kind of in a way. So you know, and you know, it's only been a couple of years. I listened to it a decent amount. Twenty twenty was a weird year to listen to music for me. So I I guess it's been kind of left behind in a way, and I need to kind of go back and. Um, give it a second assessment to really fully grasp, you know, how great this, I have listened to it here and there. A lot of it is like a radio theater kind of thing. So it's gotta be the right kind of mood, but it has, you know, it's earworms, you know, besides Skyrider, uh, the saints one and two, I believe they go, they go in, they reference the saints when the saints grow marching in, um, 30, 77, those who sojourn, but never a key. Um, you know, Kate is great on this album. You know, the whole band, you know, the, the, this is, in some ways, I like this album more than the the Ravenlocks when it came out. I, I'm it's splitting hairs, and then you talk about Queen of the Night now, um, but you know, just, and the whole concept, you know, and the whole thing about being in the future, uh, you know, there were some different things I was getting from it, like Westworld and stuff like that. Um, but it, it's it's great, you know. One of my friends hates it sadly, but um, I I happen to love the, this band, and while they are a lot like the Deer Hunter, they're also a fair amount different. Um, <laughs> Yeah, anyway. So, yeah, part of the... They were known as the Dead Horse Alaska EPs. But, um, yeah, Dead Horse uh, from 2020, technically, from Dirt Poor Robbins at number 62. Number 60. It was my album of the year in 2020. Probably still would be, actually. Number 61, the self-titled Mute Math album. The debut album came out in 2006. was later released with all the, a lot of the extra tracks from the tracks that were on uh, the Reset EP. But... Um, it's you know it's it's an album they the, the, the mute mouth album I probably listen to the most I probably know the best from beginning to end. Um, Typical is a you know a showstopper. They play live chaos as well. They did that on Craig Kilborn and uh, you know Paul always jumps on the keyboard on that song. Um, Stare at the sun, break the same, break the same is very tricky, very kind of energetic and uh, proggy in a lot of ways. You are mine. That always sounds like a sting track. Um, stall out notice it's it's a great album um although 
in revisiting their whole catalog, I well, I love it. I don't know. It's like I go back and forth between some of their other records. Sometimes I might consider this their best record. Sometimes I put it like second or third. I don't know. Um, and it was 2006 when I was starting to do albums of the year list. That was like the second year I did it. It was in my top five albums. I, I remember that. So um, Mute Mass, self-titled album from 2006. You know, the, the especially the police element was really noticeable on that album. You know, but it was the police kind of thing in a good way. So anyway, number 61, Mute Mass, um, self-titled album. Number 60, Children's Songs from Leto and Wright. Again, a little bit like Bryce Plays Drums. They're not like overtly of this sort of hybrid styles as much as some but they're 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 prog they're folk they're irish in some ways they're or celtic um and they're kind of bluesy at points but um and they're classical the this has two big epics the you know the the, the two first two tracks are great too wasn't that a time in the broom broomfield hill but children's song references like 10 different pieces it children's song was a chick korea piece i guess but they reference Zeppelin to Bartok to um, Chick Corea to a few other composers. I'm not remembering right now off the top of my head, but it's it's great. The riffs toward in certain points it gets really heavy. Uh, the crescendos. It's a masterpiece. That that Pete that that way they kind of molded and you know composed all those different mo- movements together um, and interpreted whatever Chick- the Chick Corea original or if it was original. I, don't, I think Chick Corea's might be referencing Bartok and some others as well. But then Betsy Bell and Mary Gray almost tops it in some ways as an original piece. The dynamics are almost equally as good in that. So um, they don't write our band from Minnesota. Like I said, John Wright also has a band called the Galactic Cowboy Orchestra that are maybe a little more well-known in the prog scene. Um, but they have a long, you know, pretty extensive catalog. They have whatever. I meant it to do like a thing on my blog about them. Uh, like a whole extensive, di- uh, you know, dissection or whatever. I could do it. I do a video at some point because I listened to Ye Mariners all the other day, and I was like, man, this is really good. Their debut album, that's you know from two thousands. They've put out whatever this is. They don't even have the most recent on here, um, Curios. But you know, so that's whatever six, eight. They have nine albums. Um, I mean, a lot of it is folk rock, but uh, you know that the prog is definitely in there. They're fans of Jethro Tull and Genesis, of course. You know, and I mean, I guess I have a little bit of a bias because they're from my hometown. But, um, yeah, I, I think many people have slept on this album that, like, Prague especially. Um, Children's Songs from Lado and Wright, number 60. Uh, number fi- came out in 2010. Number 59, Wake Pig from 3. And uh, to be fair, there's two versions from 2004 that there's the original release. And there's 2005, which or- reordered the track list. And I actually probably would go, my go-to would be this, the, the, the remastered, reordered track list version. Um, it has a maze disgrace, which is kind of three's maybe trademark track, um, epic. It's got the, just the, the, the flow on that, you know, and it's just, oh my God, that's just amazing. That amazed disgrace, uh, the passion and Joey's vocals, the drum work, um, you know, and the, 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 the flamenco guitar work on that and like Brahma Futura, you know, he does on this album, alien angel, it's heavy, uh, monster, the title track, trust. Trust, and they reprise trust part of that, I believe, on Amaze Disgrace. That dun, 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 dun. Do- dogs of war. One way town is super catchy. That ain't Queen and Circus Without Clowns because they have their pop element. I love when Three does poppy songs. Uh, oh, I love it's uh, their earworms, and they've written like maybe eight or nine or ten songs like that. And on this album, I would include both One Way Town and Circus Without Clowns. Uh, vo- the vocals, Joey's vocals, especially Joey Eppard. Um, so three, this is the first of a, 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 a few different three records that, um, cause I don't think, I don't believe I've, I've included the other, the other records that I would be including yet. Um, it's weird, but they're another band that has a bunch of albums and I, it's hard to really compare the to them. So I just kind of d- did the, you know, the, the, the ranker pub meeple site. And then th- this album came out where it did, but, um, many, many times for many years, this was actually, I consider this my favorite three album, but it's sort of what can you do, and I actually have a copy. I've started my three video last year in 2021 of the original, which is is pretty hard to find now. More people have the actual um, the 2005 version, but the 2004 version, 2005 came out on Metal Blade, but it was Planet Noise, which is like a smaller label. Anyway, number 59, Three's Wake Pig. Number 58, uh, the most recent full length album from uh, Small League Sing Ships in Portland, Oregon, Golden Calf. Um, 
it's it's not there's gonna, there's going to be more small league sink ships on this list, but um, it was a top ten record for I think top five it was top ten that year in 2017 for me. Probably still would end up being in the, among the top ten records in that year. I I love this band, the quirky sort of math rock with you know yeah art rock. They they have a little bit of the emo, but not much. Um, Dancing Devil, uh, Psychotic Opera. Tethered Wives. I haven't listened to this album as much as, you know, the, the EP that followed it maybe since. I mean, but I did buy it on vinyl. They don't have the vinyl listed on here. I'm pretty sure I did. Yeah, I did. Um, but it's, it's. I mean, it's consistent. I don't know if the sound is dramatically different than some of the other records, but um, it, it's their band that I just, I just enjoy just being in the end. They really can't do anything wrong right now. Look, look, I put Derpa Robbins in that category. I would actually now it's still put Foles back in that category. Um, and this is among their, you know, among those records, one I would have no problem, you know, listening to regularly. Um, Drug Lord. I mean, they're quirky. They're odd. They use a lot of cool percussion. Um, they were starting to use some electronics. They did more of it on the on the, the, the EP that followed this. And the hopefully the new record where, that's going to be a full length in 2023 will have more of that. But anyway... Golden Calf by Small League Sing Ships, number 58 on the uh, Progressive Art Rock list from 2017. All right, so we'll go on to the next five. Number 57, we see Kiss Kiss again show up. So um, this is the album, of course, that got me into Kiss Kiss, although I remember when this came out, I had already heard their EP, and I was already excited about that, and I heard some songs on MySpace. I don't remember how I heard about them, though. I forget. I may, Someone may have suggested them to me, or I just found them. It was on MySpace. But oh my god, I I adore this record and it's addictive. It's it's, been, it's one of the most addictive. It's only whatever thirty two minutes. Uh, a lot of the fans that got into them were that was their biggest complaint is it's too short. Um, Janet is catchy. Uh, Six Sense, the con- a conch to the ear. The closing two tracks, the string s- arrangements are great. Vagabond, the passion in Josh Benash's voice. Stay the day. It's just dreamy and sort of uh, surreal at points. Cats in Your House is energetic. Satellite, great kind of quirky, um, you know, what's the word? Uh, um, not incongruous, but um, schizophrenic at times. Schizophrenia done somehow well. They cram so many ideas into a small, short track, and it just somehow works. Sixth Sense, I think I mentioned that one already. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, this is a classic to me. As much as it's a short record, um, I love this album. They, you know, if you like King Crimson and you like sort of modern experimental rock, this would be one definitely to check out. Dark Cabaret, yeah, like a little bit like Amanda Palmer or the Dresden Dolls. You could hear elements of some other bands like System of a Down or um, like Murder by Death or Clan Zoo have also been on this list. So, Reality versus the Optimist, the debut album from Kiss Kiss from number 57 on this list. Number 56, The Arc Android. Janelle Monet's proper full-length debut and the second release from her officially the audition i don't really count came out in 2010 um it's an epic record it's a concept album of course the second part of the concept of the you know metropolis whatever concept um it was probably it's probably it's her commercial peak and it had you know tightrope which was everywhere the summer of 2010 um and I wasn't into it right away. I was thinking she was just another, you know, pop diva that I didn't need to give my time to. And I was totally wrong because some of my friends were talking about her. And I, I gave her a second assessment and it, she totally won me over. Um, really cool psychedelic, neo-psychedelia and the guitar textures on some of these tracks. Beyond Tightrope. Tightrope's a decent song. Yeah, it has the the element of um, James Brown in it. Um the atmosphere, though, and the textures, like that Dance or Die with Saul Williams, I love. Uh, type, uh, let's see, that features Big Boy, of course. Cold War, catchy. There was a video for that. That got a lot of radio play. Um, what's the other? Faster. Faster is a great track. I mean, it's, it's a story. It's very kind of um, sci-fi-ish about, you know, an android who kind of has AI and discovers, you know, it's similar to the Metropolis film premise about artificial intelligence and, and androids or robots. Um my only issue, my only track I, I typically don't like as much is the song with Of Montreal, because I don't like the singer from Of Montreal that much, ironically, even though I like Game Sandler so much. Um, Make the Bus. I'm not thrilled with that track. Uh, ba Ba Baia, which is the, the, the clothing track. That one is very symphonic, 
very Disney like, but it's like the, the closing epic to the story of the epic story, you know, whatever the ending of the, the epic story of this particular chapter. Um, sort of the end, you know. I, you know, around this time, it was a little bit after this, I, I was trying to investigate Philip K. Dick stories and like with, you know, Westworld and all these, you know, artificial intelligence, Battlestar Galactica, Terminator. I get kind of those vibes in this and sort of an original story, but the similar kind of idea that I get fascinated by because I'm really into a lot of that stuff. Um, the sweets, you know, the, you know, the, a lot of the kind of warm moments and they were, you know, the dynamics on this record are really good. Um, yeah, it has a lot of R and B funk, of course, and soul. So it, it's not just prog, but to not call it progressive would be silly. Cause you know, there's a lot of ambition. She's a big star Wars fan for one thing. Also, of course they deal with androids and in, in star Wars. Wonderland's another one that's sort of an earworm. Anyway, the Arc Android, very highly praised. It's number ten on the the Rate Your Music twenty ten list, and you know it 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 ends up at number fifty six for me um, on this list. So number fifty five, you know the the first project that Josh Benash did, I think I can't remember. He put out a solo album before or after this or an EP, but the Hollow Choir, um, the lone record from Vuvuzela, the Hollow Choir from twenty twelve. This, you know, it's weird that I would put this album above the two Kiss Kiss albums. It's got splitting hairs and was done through that rating, ranker comparison thing um, on Pub Meeple. But I guess I can understand why, because I just worshipped this record for a short while back in 2012. It's, you know, it's like waltzy prog with piano arrangements. I mean, there's not that much guitar on it, but it's crazy. It's similar. You know, it's like Cardiacs in some ways. It's similar to the Kiss Kiss stuff in a way, but they they didn't emphasize as much guitar and they use more and they didn't use as much violin. They use more piano, um, rings and things. Yeah, they did a video for that. I'm pretty sure. You know, the whole record is great. It's less is more. It's only again 27 minutes. Like a lion's a favorite. The title track that closes it. It's only a digital release. Digital release, sadly. Well, actually, this says it came out on CD. That is something that I that. Maybe, because I, I would guess I was the one who created this. Yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> probably because of the default at that point was CDs. I don't think it ever came on CD. I, I, I would buy it in a heartbeat if it was. But um, it's I think it's on, it's either on Bandcamp or on, on um, it's either on Bandcamp. Here's my original review on the blog, by the way. Um, it's either on Bandcamp or on Spotify. I can't remember if, yeah. Oh, well, actually they had it on, of all places, SoundCloud. Um, so it's through Motor o- Mortar Oat Records, which I don't know who else they, um, they had, but, um, and I, I would be surprised if their website's around anymore. Cause you know, this has been 10 years since they did any music. Josh has been doing his solo stuff and he's got that new project, um, came up this past year, which I'm, I'm spacing on. Um, I don't know if it was linked to his, his, uh, linked to his, his page here. No, it wasn't, but, um. Yeah, no, you know, this is terrific. You know, I mean, among the Josh Josh Benash canon, the Hollow Choir, I can easily see consider that my favorite among the, th- the three or four records that I really love. I, lo- I like his solo records too, but they're kind of hit and miss. Anyway, Vuvuzela is the Hollow Choir from 2012, number 55. So then you have three show up again. And there's a connection between actually between Kiss Kiss and Josh Benash and three. Joey Eppard's a big fan of Josh Benash, which is kind of weird. But their album from 2007, the, the follow-up to... Um, Wake Pig, the first new album on on Metal Blade, and another terrific album, another terrific album. The end has begun. Another epic record. Um, you know, I don't know if it's their heaviest record, but they were they seem to be emphasizing the heavy riffs more on this than even uh, overall than on than the, the previous records. But um, My Divided Falling, Serpents in Disguise. That add that to the catchy songs list. Uh, Diamond in the Crush, another catchy, and These Iron Bones, the vocal vocal arrangements just soars on that. But then you have The World is Born a Flame. You know, it's great riffs, great rhythms, great almost groove riffs, the groove on this. I mean, they, they were compared to King's X at one point, and I could sort of see that. I don't know if I've ever seen a quote from um, Joey about if he's a fan of King's X. Ironically, they both played at Woodstock in 1994 too, so maybe that was part of it. Bend to the Future, you know, that's kind of dreamy. Um, I know there's a lot of, like, Influence from the Terminator series, including, I believe it was the, these Iron Bones video. They used either Terminator shots from the film from the second Terminator movie, or I mean, these Iron Bones. They're kind of referring to Terminator uh, in that the Last Day is also dreamy. That's kind of a, like a soothing epic piece, a little epic at the end. But 
I love the, I mean, the, the grammar, of course, is silly. The end is begun. Like, we're kind of de-evolving, like in um, Idiocracy from Mike Judge. The end is begun. Uh, talking about, you know, the future and AI and the Terminator and stuff like that. But, um, yeah, I, it's a terrific record. It's a terrifically produced record. Uh, the production is pristine. There's even a bonus track with their cover of CM, CM Lee Play by, um, by Pink Floyd, the early Pink Floyd. Anyway, number 54, The End Is Begun from 3. So number 53, Dopogera from Clint 1918. I had, I believe, one of the other ones is an honorable mention, one of their other records. But um, this was the album that made me a fan of Clint 1918. And sadly, they haven't put out anything since I've liked nearly as much. Um, but they're going to come off the new album supposedly soon. Um, we'll see. I'm still a fan. This album, to me, it sounds like U2 in a lot of ways, like gone kind of post-rock and heavier at points. Although, because their previous records were almost heavier. This was, I mean, it's more on the line of like um, doom metal. This was more purely rock and post-rock, um, but very catchy and energetic at times. They Were Red by the Sea has probably always been my, my go-to, although I know most people love Snow of 85. Lomo and Sleepwalk and Rome are great. There's actually a remix of Sleepwalk and Rome that is just dreamy. I love that remix. The I have this on CD. Uh, I want to thank Shane, who the late Shane from uh, the Medium Music Spectre 1982 was his screen name. He's the one who was had this on his 2005 list, and I, I was obsessed with this. I went through my MySpace page countless times that that December of 2005 to early 2006, just listening to those songs on there, and I got the CD. Unfortunately, the condition of my case is not great, so I, I've actually been meaning to try to find another copy that was in better condition. But Night Drivers, Because You Tonight, Post War, I, I this is a great record that just flows perfectly. The energy, the text, guitar textures, the vocals even really are, kind of work really well with this album. Um, and it's just if you need a pick me up, I used to listen to this all the time at work. Do I needed some energy to like get more work done? This was a go to, uh, and I love Dopo Guerra. This is you know. A crowning achievement from Clint 1918. I don't know if it ever came out in vinyl. I would really, I, I wouldn't even hesitate to buy it if it did. It doesn't look like on here, but um, that Discogs might have it on vinyl. Anyway, uh, Dopo Guerra from number 53 from 2005 by uh, Clint 1918, the Italian. They're from Italy, I believe. Um, that's what I think that the, 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 their name comes from, I think he died, the, the, the artist Klimt. He's an Italian artist and he died in 1918, so that's how they got their name. All right, I'll do, let's see, what are we looking at for time here? 32 minutes. All right, I'll do one more, one more, and then that's going to call it, we'll be, we'll be within the top 50. Now, I'll do I'll do the rest of this list rather than just do it to 50. So, um, number 52, one of my favorite records I've discovered over the last two years, Misinformation Age from Eldrin. Um, Indie Tronica, and I kind of felt like, it, sort of unfairly, this was, the best record, this was like my personal sequel to Blood Moon in some ways. Um, I, I grew to love this album really quickly, uh, oddly enough. Bought the vinyl, bought the, the CD, bought their other CDs. This band from uh, Denver, uh, Denver, somewhere in Colorado at least. Um, Apocalypse Town is probably my favorite. It's that, that is just crazy prog with electronics and synths, with synths rather. Um, we just want the world, you know, hold on. I mean, they, there's vocalists that sound like a combination of a bunch of different singers, like like Daniel Johns, and um, they use a violin, kind of a little bit like the Family Crest, uh, but they, they're do, using the electronics enough to sort of have them distinguish themselves from being just a chamber band. Um, the songwriting is just just incredible, and the production, it's, it's, it's a you know concept album of sort in space. So, I mean, it, you know, I guess part of it is like, yeah, I've been looking for an album that really – um, brought brought me that kind of you know kind of uh, what's the word um, being in awe of like the way I was in awe of Blood Moon and while this I, I would not put this on Blood Moon's level at this point this is a, still a crowning achievement among their catalog and, and just in general of the, the 21st century albums and music uh, yeah <laughs> might be the most underrated band of all time I, I cannot wait the, the, hopefully that I've been trying to go back they did a covers album a couple years ago in 2020 but um, they're not that active on social media, but I'm hoping that they post something soon and we, they'll be working on new music. I know some of the members had to move maybe temporarily, maybe to go move back with family uh, that weren't from Colorado. I don't know. I saw something a couple of years ago right when I got into them reading about that. But anyway, Eldrin's Misinformation Aged, uh, number 52. Number 51, Long Distance Callings, like my favorite record from them, a record that introduced me to them and got into them, Avoid the Light. 
progressive post-rock, you call it, you know, um, heavy progressive post-rock, you could say in a way. Uh, there's, there's vocals on the nearing grave. I think that's it. The rest of them are all instrumentals. I know they had a quote from the Outer Limits in the the CD I bought. Um, it for this this uh, to me it like this basically succeeds where a lot of post rock fails. Um, yeah, it's dreamy, energetic. You know, a lot of the words I like to use. Um, yeah, they just they the, the debut album I've listened to a few times. I have it on CD. There's a big step up on that. This just. Yeah, it's the dynamics really work, and it's you know they use some samples. Um, there's just things I really enjoy about this record. The production is really good. Um, you know they remind me of some other bands specifically. You know you could say besides post rock, Dredge is one of them. Um, Dredge or Ocean Size, you could say it's like they're a little bit like, a, like an instrumental version of Ocean Size. That's just putting it vague. But anyway, uh, Long Distance Calling, The Void, The Light, uh, Number Fifty One. In fact, you know what? I think maybe I should call this a video and then I'll just start from number 50 so I can just do the top 50. Uh, but thank you for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't subscribed. And we'll see you next time.